y'all. I'm Elisa and I am the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com and today I have an art journaling process video for you and I'm going to be working with some new products from Arteza. Now these were sent to me by Arteza for review but my opinions are my own. I'm going to be checking out the metallic watercolors which I am super excited about. 24 colors all in a half pan. I cannot wait to get it set up and then they sent me two of their premium watercolor Pads. So that is what I'm going to be working on today. I don't get to use watercolor paper a lot, so I am very excited to dive in and try these. I thought I would wait and open this um, package for you so you could see how it comes, how the setup goes, and all of that. So I'll make sure to link any products I end up using down below. Otherwise, I'll put you all on fast forward and let's go. Okay, if you are not interested in seeing me open this up and get a brand new set of watercolors all set up, then you can skip ahead to 540 and that's where the art journal process starts and you can see how the watercolors are in action. But here is how this set comes. So you have the pan and you can see what I'm gonna do is pop out all of those watercolors. I do the top row on one side, the bottom row on the other side. And conveniently in the package, you already get a um, swatch card. In fact, you get two swatch cards and they are labeled super clearly and it's awesome. So what I'm going to do is I have my swatch card out and I'm very carefully unwrapping each little bit, each little pan of watercolor and popping it back in. And what you do is once you've popped them out, you go back and all of those little metal pieces I press back in so that when I put the little pans back, they kind of snap in. If you don't press the metal back in before it, before you start putting the watercolor in, then they slide around, it gets a little bit um, wonky, I guess. And so if you really want a tight fit, make sure to press them back before you start um, reloading your watercolor. And you can see, look at how gorgeous they are just in the container. And it also came with an Arteza water brush, which I love because I already have several of these that I use on a regular basis. It makes it super easy. You just fill it up with water and it's great for water coloring on the go, especially. So you can see here, they sent two different swatch cards. The white one is a true watercolor um, paper and they actually have great instructions on the back about how to properly swatch watercolors. The black uh, swatch card is more of a cardstock. I would say it's not a watercolor paper, but it's great to be able to see how these metallic watercolors act on black. So I had never heard swatching explained in this way and I just thought it was fabulous. So in the upper left corner, I'm doing a dot that's very saturated, a lot, a lot of color, and then I'm cleaning off my brush. And in the lower right, I am doing just water. So in the top left, lots of color, clean off your brush, lower right, just water, and then you dry off your brush and you very carefully connect the two. And what that does is allow you to see how that watercolor fades. You get a really nice fade so you can see how light can I make that color, how dark can I make that color. And I love the, the, the technique that was shared on the Arteza swatch cards and I used it throughout all of the swatches. One thing I have learned about metallic watercolors is that when they're in the pan, it does take a little bit more working, I guess. I don't know how better to describe it, but a little bit more water, a little bit more effort with the brush to really get that pigment reacting and get it on your brush. But once it's on your brush, these had a beautiful pigment to them. They performed beautifully on the paper and I loved the swatch technique. I'll show you just a little bit. I won't make you watch me swatch out all of these cards. But again, I did a lot of pigment in the upper left and then very carefully faded it to just water in the lower right. And it gives you a great impression of different ways that you'll be able to use these watercolors. I was super pleased that the swatch cards were already in here so I didn't have to make my own and that they were done on such a high quality paper so that I could truly see how the colors would react. Okay as you can see I finished my swatching and I am in love. I love that they sent the black watercolor paper to swatch on and then look at these gorgeous colors. I think my favorite. Now it might be hard to see on camera. I love this iridescent pink. I'm in love with the iridescent green and actually all of the pinks I really 
and digging. So I'm excited to try this in an art journal entry on some watercolor paper. So let's make something. Okay, so to thoroughly test these watercolors, the best way I think is to actually make a page with them. So I'm using that Arteza watercolor paper. It's great. I love that it's in a pad that I can easily remove the pages so that I can frame it or use it in other mixed media if I want to cut things out of it or put it into a Bible or a different art journal entry. I love that flexibility. Now I'm using the black and I am using that uh, watercolor brush that came in the package. You'll also see me grab another one that has a little bit thicker, broader tip and it's also Arteza brand and I'll make sure to link that below. They have a lot of options. And there are several different things that I am looking for and testing as I am working. The first is I'm looking for the quality of the watercolor paints. Of course, watercolors come in a wide range from student all the way up to artist level. And just depending on what your needs are, um, you can find the one that matches best for you. There is a wide price range as well attached to watercolors. And so if you are not creating family heirloom pieces, or if you are not someone that is selling your artwork, you might not necessarily need to invest in a really expensive set. What I like about Arteza is it's right there in the middle. When I use cheaper watercolors um, from other brands, sometimes they end up feeling really chalky, even the metallic ones, and I don't like that feel in any of my projects. And I have not experienced that with Arteza, and I didn't experience it in this piece. You can see that I'm starting with these leaves and I'm dropping color in. So I start with one basic color and then I'm blending in just to see how it travels, how they mix well, and it is a really pretty blend. It doesn't, it's hard to see here on the camera, but it blends so easily and nicely. There's very few harsh lines, which I really appreciate as someone that's not as experienced in watercolor. Um, I want it to blend really nicely and easily because I don't want those lines. When I'm watercoloring, I'm definitely wanting that soft impression. And so I like that these accomplish that. Something else to consider when you're looking at watercolors would be the high permanence. So like I said earlier, if you are creating pieces that you want to be able to pass down, you want to frame, then you do want to go with a higher quality watercolor so that those pieces will last. The cheaper brands are not going to do that for you. And again, I feel like Arteza is a really good quality for the cost. And so that's why I've used them before. I think it's great for the, those of us that who are aspiring artists and maybe not selling our pieces, but we certainly um, were proud of them and we do want to pass them down at some point. And so these do have that permanence and that quality and um, they really do last. Now, the next thing that I look for, I guess puts me in the column of lazy painter or lazy crafter, but I like a set that comes with a lot of color choices. So my other metallic sets that I've used in the past have 12 colors in them, and this has 24 colors. So I don't have to do very much mixing on my own. Yes, one of the pros of using watercolors is that you can blend colors and mix them and there's even spots within this uh, tin that it comes in that you can blend and mix and when it dries you'll be able to reactivate that paint in the tin pan and use it again but I tend to not have a lot of time when I'm crafting and when I get a chance to paint I just want to paint and I don't want to do a lot of blending so I like that there is a wide variety of color choices this is one of the larger sets of metallic watercolors that I've seen on the market and I do like the array of choices they have kind of the classics the gold and the bronze and the silvers those of course but what I was really impressed with especially were the blues and greens that you'll see in this piece, how they reacted together, how they blended so nicely, and just the array that was available. There were a lot of possibilities in there, and it makes me excited to use this set more and more. You'll have to let me know below if you enjoy mixing the colors or if I'm not the only one who just prefers that they would come in all the colors so I would never have to do any mixing. But let me know below, do you, I have a lot of subscribers I know that love to watercolor. Do you like mixing your colors? Do you like customizing it? Or do you just prefer a pan or a half pan that is ready to go? So let, let me know below. 
Something else that I look for in any watercolor set is the transparency versus the opaqueness. And I might be a little bit different, but especially on metallic watercolors, I'm actually looking for a little bit more of an opaque because I've had so much experience where metallic watercolors end up looking very washed out. I want them to be able to stand on their own and have a little bit more um, boldness to them. And so I am looking, these did a great job. When I layered them on top of each other, you, di you didn't completely lose what was underneath. So it kind of held its own. And there was a transparency to the ones that were on top that you, it really let the light through so that you could see the layers start to form, which of course, layering and blending in watercolor um, is one of is one of my most favorite things to watch an artist create and, and to work on myself. A skill I'm still really working on, of course, I'm still um, a newbie artist when it comes to watercoloring, but I love it. And so that's one of the things. How transparent are they? How opaque are they? And what is your preference? Something to consider. The last thing I consider when I am choosing a new watercolor set really has a lot to do with preference and that's whether you are ordering watercolors in pans or tubes. One is not necessarily better than the other. There are certainly student level watercolors that are in tubes and artist level watercolors that are in tubes in the same way with pans. I actually prefer the pans like this that come in. You can buy different storage pieces for them and move them around because I don't use watercolor exclusively. I have a lot of interest when it comes to art journaling. I use acrylics and markers and all kinds of things. So I rarely go through a complete set of watercolors. I, especially one, one specific color. I like when you can reorder individually. Unfortunately, these metallic ones you can't at the moment, but I don't see myself going through this pan at such a high speed that I won't be able to just reorder the full thing when I'm ready. So I prefer the smaller pieces just for storage reasons, just for the ease of being able to travel with my art supplies. Here I can take 24 colors with me and toss it in my purse, but I can't throw 24 um, tubes of watercolor and take them easily from one place to another. So something to consider just for your personal preference. Of course, if you buy tubes, you can always put them in the pans, but that takes time. So I like when they come pre-done just like this. All right, now I am wrapping up this floral piece right here or these leaves. I had tons of fun playing with this watercolor and the layers and just seeing how it worked together. It made me super excited to use this set. You can't see it super clearly here, but I'll show you at the end. The metallicness, the shimmer is awesome. So now I'm trying one of my other very favorite techniques and you can see what I'm doing is I am painting with just water. So I have the water brush, I've cleaned it off, I'm painting with water and then you drop in the color. And when you drop in the color, it kind of just adheres to where the water is. So I like using this, especially for brush lettering or any kind of lettering to really get that cool blend and that neat watercolor feel um, without having to blend on the on the fly, if that makes sense. It does all the hard work for you as you let it dry. Something I have learned with watercolors, just a tip, um, you'll see me a couple times pull out my heating tool. That's because I'm super impatient and I'm making videos. But more times than not, if you let it do its thing and you let it air dry, you will be much more pleased with the result. The R came out super cool here. Watch when I add this drop of green. I love how it's pushing the colors and oh, it's just, it came out really, well, again, like I said, one of my favorite techniques, a really fun one to experiment with, to just make different shapes and see how the color works its way around. You can see the yellow and the golds kind of traveling there and um, really standing out still from the green that are in the leaves. It brings it in a little bit, but you can see that gold is still holding its own over top of that green leaf where it overlaps, which I really, really like i like how those two work together and i like how the layering on these particular metallic watercolors really came through so something i was super pleased with 
I will start wrapping up this page in just a moment with a few messy splatters because if you know me, I cannot leave a page so clean looking. So I'm going to add just a few black splatters there on the bottom for some signatures and then I will come through with a pencil and kind of messy those up even more. Overall, I really love this metallic watercolor set. It is one that's going to be my go-to from now on. I can tell I love the colors, I love the shine, and I love how they work together. Thank you to Arteza for sending uh, these to me to try. I do have links below if you're interested. Those are affiliate links, just a heads up. You can also check out the Arteza YouTube channel, which is full of great tutorials and demonstrations of their whole line of art products. And as a heads up, I have a discount code link below courtesy of Arteza for all of my subscribers on an order of yours. So check that out. Make sure you use it on your next Arteza order. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. I hope you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.